Week nine begins, and it was, um, it was pretty boring, to be perfectly honest. The episode was called The Birthday Party, and really it's just a bunch of setup for storylines that I'm assuming are going to turn around or have their comeuppance later on. It was... It kind of seemed like just a in-between episode. There was a few big things that happened, um, although no major consequences. Uh, Crystal gets found out, but Blake doesn't do anything about it. Um, Blake finds out that Crystal sold her necklace to help Matthew out. And it was... Yeah, it was boring. I mean, she has some sort of birthday party for Cecil, who is Cecil Colby, who helped Blake out of um, out of the ditch, out of debt. But you know, yeah, I mean, there's not much to talk about with this one. Fallon's husband Jeff. He just wants to have a normal relationship with his wife. And Fallon's like, I don't want any of that. She's bored. She's more sexually attracted to Cecil, who is her husband's uncle. And apparently they've been seeing each other for quite a bit. But uh, he says that it needs to stop because she's married and he's about to get married. And she's not too happy about that. And out of just sheer frustration, she reveals the reason why she ultimately married Jeff. And then immediately she takes it back and says, oh, that's not true. I was just trying to make you mad. But, you know, he doesn't believe her, makes this huge drunken scene at the uh, at his uncle's birthday party. The episode ended with Crystal finally having the money. Matthew gave her the money back, and so she's finally going to re-back, rebuy the necklace back. And she's not able to do it because the necklace has been bought. And so she's in a predicament um, where we leave her off this week. Um, I guess another thing that happened this episode was that Ted, who was Stephen's ex-lover, um, comes back into town and Stephen's like, no, Ted, I, I, I've been seeing a woman, a married woman, and I want to see her. This is who I am now. That doesn't last for long, and Ted comes and pretty much stays over with Stephen, and we don't know fully what happens other than that they're connecting. Yeah, so really, overall, I thought this episode was just an in-between. It's a filler episode, in essence. And filler episodes are boring. They're really, really dull. So I'd give this episode probably a 2 out of 5. It's really, it's not horrendous, but it's far from good, far from really entertaining. Um, am I excited about next week? Yeah, I mean, I know that the season's coming to an end very soon. Um, in five weeks, I think, but we have only three more episodes left. There's a two-week break coming up soon. Um... Yeah, I am excited um, because I'm intrigued to tr see how they try to ratchet it up um, at the end of the season. Honestly, it reminds me a lot of how Melrose Place had its first season, which I thought was incredibly boring. 
And that was a much longer first season than Dynasty has. That one was 32 hours, I believe, for their first season. And this is only 15 hours, so less than half of what Melrose Place did. But, you know, Melrose Place set things in motion that you knew the show was going in a good route a good place by the end of the first season. I'm not convinced that Dynasty's going to have that. I'm wondering if it's just kind of... I'm wondering if the end of the season will be underwhelming. I have a feeling it will be. But, you know, it's fine. It's all good. Because, you know, I have high hopes that season two will ramp it up and make it really, really campy, because still at the moment it's fairly realistic. Um, and realistic drama is boring. So anyways, until next week, guys.